Okay, today we're down at my shop, and what we're going to do is test out a few common relays, kind of show how they work. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my, this is a transformer here, we're going to wire it for 120 volts. I'm going to plug it directly into that socket there, which used to my little cord. And we're going to see how this 10K sequencer works, first of all. Okay, the relay we're working with is a 10KW sequencer, and it works on the premise that Low voltage is sent to these bottom two terminals. Uh, runs power through a bimetal strip. The bimetal strip has two sections, two types of metal. One of them flexes with electricity more than another and causes the contacts to close. This is the very long-winded way of saying that low voltage gets applied to this bottom two terminals. You see they're golden colored. I have an orange wire running to one side, orange wire on the other side. And basically it would be like a white and a blue. Uh, for a call for heat on an electric furnace or uh, a heat pump for supplemental heat. So that power gets sent to those terminals. The switch closes a few seconds later on the first KW and the second one on this one. And we should hear tone on these two meters. The meters are set up to hear tone on the bottom half and top half. So I'll energize this transformer by plugging it in over here. It's set up for 120 volts. Sit down here. I still have my uh, uh, resettable fuse on there just in case I made a boo-boo. I don't want to be losing transformers. So I'll set it up, plug it in, and we'll see what happens. Alright, this is simulate a call for heat. Alright, we got our call for heat. We'll wait a few seconds. We'll see what happens. So our call and our electricity is running through the strip there. Wait a few seconds. We have tone, both the legs are open, and now we have 10KW supplemental heat slash electric heat uh, passing into the heater elements. So that is how the sequencer worked, and now let's try something else. Alright, I still have our sequencer all set up there. My SC76 is still on the top two terminals, so we're going to kind of explain what I do if I have like a blower motor running and uh, there's no call for the blower, there's no call for anything, but the blower motor's running, I think maybe it's a stuck sequencer. Uh, what happens on these sequencers is that you see my red lead is on one terminal. The other terminal may run to a blower relay, like uh, the infamous Goodman blower relay I've done a couple videos on, and it will cause the blower to run if the sequencer's having a problem, and the electric heat's running without it's supposed to be running. So... Uh, if you want to check and see if that relay is stuck, it's simple. We can just put the leads just where they're at, uh, with the power off, and check the ohms. Right now it's open, so there's no current flowing through there, and no availability of current flowing through there because the switch is open. But let's plug it back in, and then we'll check and see what it says, just on ohms, not tone. Alright, power is flowing through the sequencer now, and you see it goes from open line to 0.3 ohms. So you can see that current can pass through there. If you have a suspect relay, uh, you can cut the power to it and see if it is stuck. Uh, the same with a lot of different relays. There's a lot of different relays that will be stuck like this. You have a fan motor running on fan motor relay all the time. But you can check it with the power off. You don't even check it with it on. Uh, you can start there because a lot of times you try to trace calls for certain things and trace the 24 volt signal. A lot of times it's just a relay that's stuck. And the same way, sometimes they won't close and they'll never come on. Let's take a look now at the coil and how we can troubleshoot that. Okay, I hooked up my 5KW sequencer. I have a little demonstration here. Alright, we see that our resistance across the coil is 75.1 ohms, which is pretty typical. So you can see if you were to get a really low resistance, you would know the coil is shorted or the uh, strip is shorted or there's a problem inside. If you get a resistance that's extremely high, you know there's a problem. So you can take one of the ones out of your truck and just see what kind of resistance you get to use that as a benchmark for your other relays that are similar. A lot of them will be very similar in the 65, 75 ohm coil reading. So let's turn it on. Let's hook it up and turn it on. See what happens to that reading. It was energized we energize the relay for a few minutes and look what happens. The resistance drops quite a bit. 
because of the current flowing through the relay. Now that's off, resistance increases again. To see the switch just closed, you heard that. Once it gets to a certain resistance, switch closes. It's about 34 ohms, it looks like. Now let's do it one more time. Let's see if that's the same thing that happens again. We'll energize it, and then we'll see if the switch closes at 34 ohms. Or open, sorry. And I keep saying coil, even though this is not a typical, like a contactor coil. But I'm, re I'm referring to the control voltage for it. Alright, we closed it up. The resistance is coming back up again. Let's see if we get a closed switch here in the same area. Looking for around 34, it looked like last time. Yep, there we are. Switch closes. So you can see if you have a relay that has an extremely high resistance, it's never going to close that switch. Therefore you'll have problems. Or it becomes damaged and the switch stays closed all the time. Either way, you can use ohms, which is my favorite thing, to check those things out. So that's just a little bit about sequencers. Uh, we'll do more on different kinds of relays coming up.